So what we're going to do here is we're going to try to uh, set up a gear train so that um, it is able to freely turn even though there are sort of two different directions that torque could be transmitted through the gear train. So the way to think about this is that it's possible to set up a gear train so that uh, you know, the direction that one path of torque through the gear train, you know, the, the type of turning that it wants to do through one path is different than the type through the other path. And that can take two different forms. One is, uh, it could be that the two paths totally have a completely incompatible direction, like the direction that a gear would want to turn based on one path through the gear train would be one direction, and the other path through the gear train, it would want to be the other direction. Okay, but even if you get them turning the same direction, they not only have to turn the same direction, they have to turn the same speed in order to get, in order to, for it to be a freely turning mechanism. So this is a little bit of a thinking problem because you have to figure out both of these factors in order to figure out, you know, what, how you would have to set this up in order to have a freely turning mechanism. Okay, and uh, so the first task is we got to figure out, you know, which of the two even has a possibility that it could turn freely. And once you pick that one, we have to pick uh, a number of teeth for gear number eight for whichever option we choose so that the ratio is proper no matter which direction we go through the gear train. Okay, so let's actually start with the question of uh, should it be option one or should it be option two? And what I suggest for this is that we kind of pick a location in the gear train to start and then sort of pick a location in the gear train to end and trace it through from both directions from beginning to end. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Let's imagine we're taking gear number five right here and we're thinking about trying to turn it counterclockwise. Fair enough so far? All right. If we do that, what direction will gear number two want to turn? Clockwise, right? And that means gear one also wants to turn clockwise because that's a compound gear, right? So that's also turning clockwise. Then gear one interfaces with gear four. And that, since it's uh, meshing with it, it changes the direction again, and we would be back to counterclockwise, which would also be the direction of gear number three, counterclockwise. So then what direction would gear 11 want to go? Clockwise. Clockwise. And I tell you what, I'm going to stop there and now I'm going to chase it from the other end. Okay? So I'm going to go, what about between gear 5 and gear 7? Okay, so this went counterclockwise. Gear 7 would want to go clockwise, right? Gear 6 wants to go clockwise. Okay? What about gear 9? Counterclockwise, which would be the same thing as gear 8, would be going counterclockwise because they're connected to each other. And if that's going counterclockwise, then what? Gear 10 would be going clockwise. Can both gear 11 and gear 10 both be turning clockwise? They can't because they are meshing right here, and so that can't happen. Okay? We can do the same type of a process through the, uh, the other option here. You might notice that really the only thing that changed between the two options is that we either had just a gear 10 or we had a combo of gear 10 and 11. So that should give us a little bit of hope that it probably will work on option two, but we can kind of go ahead and, sh and prove that quickly. That go counter if that went counterclockwise, this would go clockwise, this would go clockwise, this would go excuse me, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, this would go clockwise, this would go clockwise, okay, this would go counterclockwise. Did I get that right? Counter, hang on, did I mess that up? Don't do that on your test, okay. Counterclockwise, this makes this go clockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, which makes this go clockwise, okay? We can kind of do a similar thing over here. We had counterclockwise, which means this goes clockwise, means this goes counterclockwise, okay? 
which means it makes gear 10 go clockwise. So we want option two. So the, for, the, uh, for choice number one, we want to say, I want to pick option two if what I'm going for is to make this gear train turn freely. OK? But that's only part of the way there. What's the next step? OK. I need to pick a number of teeth for gear number eight. All right. So let me do that this way. I can trace what my gear ratio is between gear five and gear 10 by going around one direction around this loop. And I can do the same thing by going the other direction around the loop. And they better both be the same ratio. Do you agree with that? So what we can do there is we can basically say, what's the ratio from gear five to gear two? Does gear two go slower or faster? OK, looks like it'll go slower, right? So you basically take gear five number of teeth, 16, OK, and gear two number of teeth, 88. And that would be the first ratio that we would have between gear five and uh, gear two. So maybe I'll say five to two. What's next after that? Gear one to four. Does that slow it down some more? OK. So we probably want to do uh, like a 27 over 85. And this goes from one to four. Then what? OK, the next one goes from three to 10. Right? So does 10 go faster or slower than gear 3? Should go faster because it's smaller, right? So I would multiply 60, or I'd multiply by 66 over uh, 25. I'm saying this had better be equal to, now we'll trace around it the other way. So this is, had better be equal to, what's the number for gear 5? Uh, 16, okay. Gear 7 will go slower, so I'll go 16 over 68. Okay. What about 6 to 9? Nine? 9 goes slower, right? So I'm going to probably do a 24 over 80. Okay. And then what? Next one we've got is 8 to 10. 10 would be turning faster, right? OK. And it looks like 8 is bigger, all right? So anyway, the point of that, you know, you kind of think the direction we've gone. We've, we went 5 to 7, then we went uh, 6 to 9. Now we'll go 8 to 10. And we don't know the number for gear number 8, so I'll just call that n sub 8 and then divide that by uh, the number of teeth for gear number 10, which would be 25. OK? And that's just an equation we can solve for the number of teeth. And hopefully, we come up with an integer number. Hopefully, the instructor that wrote this problem was thinking about that and made sure that it came out as an integer. Because it's possible to set up a problem like this where it doesn't turn out as an integer. And uh, you know that would make it not turn out right. OK, so here I've got uh, basically all of my ratios on one side. I'm going to set that equal to all of my ratios on the other side. So 16 times 24 times, and here I'll just put x. And in the denominator, I'll put 68 times 80 times 25. OK? And what this calculator will do is solve that equation for me. All you got to do is hit Shift, and then above the Calc key there, you see it says Solve. Uh, it does require you to have an initial guess, kind of like MathCAD does. 
Um, for this problem, there's, there's really no uh, limit on what we can choose for our initial guess. It will get the right answer. So um, hit equals tells me I need 54 there for my number of teeth on uh, gear number eight. Okay, hopefully that's one of the answers here. So the answer there is G.